Welcome to Outback Outdoors. Make sure you like, subscribe, and click the alert to stay up to date on all our new videos. Listen up, I've rode through howling hell and wind and snow and rain. I am oblivious to misery and pain. And that iron in your gizzard, it will never go away. So long as you got work to do today. And there's a monster on your back, son, get your guts up off the trail. We got a job to do and I promise we won't fail One day you'll earn your scars and all the fearlessness you lack Don't worry about that on Charlie Bull The monster's on your back There's a monster on your back it really takes a team of hardcore hunters and friends to make Outback Outdoors a success. And today we're going to join two of them. Chris Callanan is going to head into the high country of California for an archery mule deer buck hunt, do it yourself style. Then we're going to switch gears, head into the high country of California once again with Wade McCammond as he tries to harvest a once in a lifetime California desert bighorn sheep. He rallies the troops and they head up into the high country for this very special hunt. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it. Stick around, Outback Outdoors starts right now. Mid to late August, we're on our way to Northern California to hunt a general California archery tag. Um, California is unique in the sense that <clears throat> they offer uh, both general and limited draw uh, tags. This area here that we're going to is a general season tag. You can buy what they call an AO or a uh, archery only tag. And as long as you're within one of those uh, general season tags, you can go ahead in there and archery hunt. It's a great opportunity uh, to get some more hunting in. And um, great country, we're gonna be hunting uh, the high country of uh, Northern California. We're gonna be right around between 9,000 and 10,500 feet. Uh, good time, should see some deer hopefully and uh, we'll get it done. Okay, so we made it here. We're uh, about a quarter mile from camp, and uh, this is a pretty good location uh, in order to get some water before we go to camp. That way we don't have to lose elevation camp. Uh, the, the spot that we're gonna be staying at is situated kind of on a, uh, a knife ridge, and it affords us the opportunity to look down both the uh, north side, the east side, and the west side of the uh, mountain range. This water location typically in a good uh, water years is usually running down, trickling down fairly good to where you can just dig out a nice little pool, let it settle, get your water and go to camp. Uh, this year's been a little bit drier 
Um, so as you can see here, there's this is just a wet, damp, moist area. So what we've done is we've dug out a little hole. Water is cold. Ice cold water. It's uh, maybe eight inches deep. And uh, we'll just let the uh, silt and the mud settle a couple minutes and uh, we'll get our water purifiers out. We'll go ahead and uh, slowly uh, get our water out, fill up our water bladders, go to camp and uh, set up camp and start glassing for the evening. It's the first evening and we weren't here five seconds and all the way across this uh, little basin there are several deer <clears throat> there in that lake over there and uh, looked like there was a pretty good buck and they were actually waiting in the lake. We've been glassing for a little bit. That buck that was at the uh, lake, he kind of moved down into a draw and um, he and a doe were just kind of sitting there feeding around. <laughs> We've got about two hours of daylight left, and uh, we don't really have a whole heck of a lot of time to hunt. So we're gonna just bail off, gonna go up this draw, uh, and uh, see if we can't get close enough to this buck to put an arrow in him. He's not huge, he's only a fork and horn, but uh, take it when you can get it. California, general season, archery, gotta take him. By definition, the New Rage Extreme is a broadhead designed to be used in an instance of aggression to the highest degree. Our most devastating broadhead yet, the Extreme creates massive wound channels and tears gaping holes. It's an extreme broadhead, built for extreme hunters. Rage Broadheads, leading the evolution in lethal technology. over this rise. He was feeding right here. I could just see the top of his back. And I was too afraid to sit up to, to range him. So I just peeked through the tops of the grass and said, okay, yeah, he's about 40 yards. <laughs> and I drew back. And when I stood up, in my head I'm going, no, nah, I think that's more like 50. <laughs> nah, I shoot it for 40, you'll be all right. So I shot it for 40. Can't eat the ones that get away. So I missed. Dad gun it. Just sitting here. I should have ranged it. Out back outdoors, tech tip of the week. <laughs> Ranger animal. That's what you carry him for. Okay, it's the second day. <clears throat> we didn't see anything this morning. Saw a couple does. Saw one look like a decent buck. Kind of hard to tell he was so far away. But um, what we're going to do now is um, there's a knife ridge that kind of goes east to west. We're gonna just kind of pick up and go on this knife ridge and as we're walking, just kind of glance off to each side. Hopefully we can find something laying down there. If not, we'll hopefully put ourselves in a position where we can uh, see where that buck went into and maybe this evening make a play on him. So you never know, but uh, definitely can't kill him here in camp. So we're gonna give it a try. We came over into this little basin. Dude, we gotta be like seven, eight miles from the trucks as a crow flies. I don't even know how many miles walking and probably three miles from a trail. Um, we sat down, we were planning on having lunch and we we're gonna chill and relax and uh, spend the evening glassing in here. And 10 minutes after sitting down, we spotted these two bucks. They were right here behind me feeding and they fed up and over and then, and then laid down. And uh, we put together a game plan Wind is swirly, wind is just doing everything but staying consistent, which it always does in the high country, but 
at least sometimes you can count on the thermals. Today you can't even count on the thermals. But we got him in and he stood there at 60 yards. I don't know if they went, they just went swirled. They jumped and blew up and just stood there. And um, fortunately I'd range that rock because I didn't have time to do much else. And I knocked an arrow, drew back. And I thought I center punched him and I believe I just smoked him. I saw him run off, saw a big blood spot. I lost sight of him around these trees. Ed said he saw him and he was hanging his head real low and was just walking super slow. So good Lord willing, hopefully we'll just walk over there, pick up his blood trail and he'll be piled up right there in the willows. But I can't tell you how pumped I am. Back country, General Tag, California. I hope, I hope we go over there and find him and I feel pretty certain we will. Regardless of that, we're still gonna sit down and we're gonna give him 30 to 45 minutes to expire. And the last thing I wanna do in this back country remote we're already in there, like I said, six, eight, seven miles, whatever we are. I don't want to, last thing I want to do is be trailing a buck up and over ridges because that direction is more roadless. That direction is the roads. So we're going to sit here, drink some water, get something to eat, and hopefully we'll be recovering that buck. Well, here we are, general season, California, second week of the archery season. And here's the results. We got it done. This trip has been nothing but the epitome of highs and lows. I missed a buck yesterday. Uh, this buck presented a pretty good shot at uh, about 57 yards, standing broadside, had no idea I was there, and I let it go, and, uh, and I'll tell you what, this Rage, these gold tip arrows tipped with the Rage, and this Hoyt Vector 35, I'll tell you what, it is some potent, potent medicine. Um, this buck, I thought for sure he went, I lost sight of him, and I, I thought he ran out 150 yards, and uh, started tracking him, come around the corner and go 40 yards and there he is piled up. Unbelievable, beautiful, beautiful buck. Okay, we got the buck broke down. We're on our way back to camp. It's gonna be fun, but it's gonna be heavy and slow. Thanks for watching this episode of Outback Outdoors. Bow hunting is hard. Ain't nothing about it easy. Out here there's no place for cheap, faulty equipment. There's no place for failure. Here's where we separate the cans and the cannots. They say it can't be done. We say, watch us. Spot Hawk, the world's toughest archery products. Equipment's unloaded. We got uh, Chris, Dennis, lucky tag holder Wade McCammon, Bill Pemberton, and myself. Wade McCammon drew the only non resident tag for California and he drew the White Mountains. And the crazy thing about that is you guys hunted this last year with yeah. uh, your buddy Wes. And yeah. so you know the area, you know the country, and you know where you were seeing rams. We're going to go ahead, load up in the Rangers, and, uh, and get to the trailhead. Let's pack in so we can start hunting. Let's do it. All right. About an hour and 20 minutes into the hike, we're probably sitting at uh, about 11,000 feet, maybe just a shy under. This is kind of the last of the big pull, and then uh, from here we top out, and then it's just kind of gradually climbs up. So we're getting into sheep country, and uh, it's going to be a good one. Hey, uh, 
I forgot a granola bar in the truck. You go get it. <laughs> This is where Chris, Wade, and Wes camped last year. And then they moved up and killed Wes's ram up high. And Chris was suggesting maybe we'll stop here, drop our packs, creep over, and we'll glass this next drainage real good. Home sweet home. Chris and I just bailed off the top of the mountain where we have camp set up. Bill and Wade headed down the ridge to do some glassing. Uh, again, the big thing we need up here is water. And, um, right now, there's a little spring here. Chris is going to go down and check, see how the water is. And uh, we're going to dam it up and do some pumping. This is the first morning that we have to hunt. Our main objective is up up over this next uh, next ridge, right? Correct. There's a couple real nice bowls over there that that's where the majority of the sheep have been hanging out. So it'll be a good morning. Good. It's gonna be a good morning. Do it. Let's make it happen, huh? Let's do it. Coming over the top, Wade spotted uh, a big band of rams, and there's a couple real nice rams in there. We believe they headed over the hill down into water, and uh, so we're going to wait them out right up here in the rock pile. Might be uh, five minutes, it might be a couple hours. We can see a few escape routes or you know other avenues if they're going to go that way. If we don't see them in two hours, we're going to back out of here and get a different vantage point and try to see in there. So. It's just a waiting game right now. Well, we just finished up with our first day. A long day, 12,500, glassing in the wind and no shade. But uh, you know, that's sheep hunting up here at the Whites. Tomorrow, we'll make a play. Hopefully put one on the ground. just crested up over the summit again. We're at uh, 12,430 feet. We sent Chris out on point. He's about 100 yards in front of us. And because uh, there's 11 sheep in that band, we feel it's better that we have one guy go down and, and peek over the edges, kind of creep up so we don't have all these heads moving around. And, should be able to pick them off. But once we get down there, if, if he hasn't found them, then we're all gonna put glass on the mountain. We've got a ram bedded at the bottom of the canyon here. We know there were 11 rams in the band. This is a pretty nice ram. Listen up, I've rode this mountain 70 years I've been alive. 
Choked on rocks and rattlesnakes and wonder I've died. Don't think I haven't had a bronc like you try me. Every time he thinks a monster is hiding around a tree, well, the monster's on your back. Shoot, Dave. There's a monster on your back. Yet. Does that look like a sheep smile? <laughs> Uh, we sat on this ramp, may not have been the best in the group of 11, but he was the most doable. Um, thought we better get a position, so because he, he was facing us, bedded, not a shot. And as uh, soon as I got in position, sure enough, he stood up and spun around. Um, we have a heck of a trek to the bottom to size everything up. Heavy blood. Guys, I can't thank you enough. Brother? Man, look at that. What a beautiful ring. Well, our White Mountain, California adventure, chasing desert bighorns up to 12,000 feet is, has come to an end. Thanks for watching this episode of Outback Outdoors. We'll see you where the white rocks and the green trees meet the blue sky. Thanks for watching Outback Outdoors. We encourage you to comment below and as always, like, subscribe, and click the alert to stay up to date on all our new videos.